Hi everyone, welcome back to KG Graves. We're at Oak Lawn Cemetery in Fairfield, Connecticut, USA. And this is a special one because it's Mary Tyler Moore, the A-list celebrity who did the Mary Tyler Moore show. I hope you enjoy watching the video. Here's more information about Mary. Grant about a secretarial job? Uh, it's been filled. If this young lady came to see Mr. Grant, why don't you let Mr. Grant handle it? Right this way, miss. It's been filled. Uh, do you have any idea when Mr. Grant will be back? Hi, Mr. Grant. You're back. <laughs> This is number 74, Mary Tyler Moore at Oak Lawn Cemetery in Fairfield, Connecticut, USA. Mary Tyler Moore was born on the 29th of December 1936 in Brooklyn, New York. She was an American actress, producer and social advocate. Mary's parents were George and Marjorie and she was the eldest of three children with a younger brother John and a younger sister Elizabeth. When she was eight years old, the family relocated to Los Angeles, California at the recommendation of her uncle, an employee of MCA. Mary's sister Elizabeth died at age 21 from a combination of painkillers and alcohol. Her brother died at the age of 47 from kidney cancer. Mary's television career began in 1952 with a job as Happy Hot Point, a tiny elf dancing on Hot Point appliances in 39 TV commercials during the 1950s series Ozzy and Harriet. Her first regular TV role was as Sam, a mysterious and glamorous telephone switchboard operator receptionist in the very popular series Richard Diamond, Private Detective, with David Jansen. In 1961, Mary appeared in several big parts on television, including Bourbon Street Beat, 77 Sunset Strip, Surfside 6, Wanted Dead or Alive, Hawaiian Eye, Thriller and Lock Up among others. In 1961, Carl Rayner cast Mary in The Dick Van Dyke Show, a weekly series based on Rayner's own life and career. Her energetic comic performances as Dick Van Dyke's character's wife, began at age 24, 11 years Dick Van Dyke's junior, and made both the actress and her signature fitted capri pants extremely popular, and she became internationally known. When she won her first Emmy Award for her portrayal of Laura Petrie, she said, I know this will never happen again. The character often wore styles that recalled the fashion of Jackie Kennedy. In 1970, Mary and husband Grant Tinker successfully pitched a sitcom that centred on Mary to CBS. The Mary Tyler Moore Show was a half-hour newsroom sitcom featuring Ed Asner as her gruff boss Lou Grant. The show proved so popular that three regular characters, Valerie Harper as Rhoda Morgenstern, Cloris Leachman as Phyllis Lindstrom and Ed Asner as Lou Grant spun off into their own three separate series playing the same characters. After six years of ratings in the top 20, the show slipped to number 39 in season seven. Producers asked that the series be canceled because of falling ratings, afraid that the show's legacy might be damaged if it was renewed for another season. Despite the decline in ratings, the 1977 season won its third straight Emmy Award for Outstanding Comedy. In seven seasons, the programme won 29 Emmys and Mary won three awards for Best Lead Actress in a Sitcom. The record was unbroken until 2002 when the NBC sitcom Frasier won its 30th Emmy. On the 22nd of January 1976, while season 6 of the Mary Tyler Moore Show was in progress, 
Mary appeared in Mary's Incredible Dream, an experimental musical variety special for CBS. After CBS cancelled that series, it brought Mary back in March 1979 in a new retooled show, The Mary Tyler Moore Hour. Described as a sitvar, part situation comedy, part variety series, it had her portraying a TV star putting on a variety show. The programme lasted just 11 episodes. In the 1985-86 season, she returned to CBS in a sitcom titled Mary, which suffered from poor reviews, sagging ratings and strife within the production crew. Mary says she asked the network to pull the show because she was unhappy with the direction and production. Next, Mary starred in the short-lived Annie Maguire in 1988. In 1995, after a lengthy break from TV work, she was cast as a tough, unsympathetic newspaper owner, Louise the Dragon Felcott, on the CBS drama New York News, the third series in which her character was involved in the news media. She was disappointed with the writing of her character and was negotiating with producers to get out of her contract for the series when it was cancelled. In the mid-1990s, Mary appeared as herself on two episodes of Ellen. She also guest starred on Ellen DeGeneres' The Ellen Show in 2001. In 2004, she reunited with her Dick Van Dyke Show castmates for a reunion special, The Dick Van Dyke Show Revisited. During her career, Mary also appeared in several Broadway plays, including Sweet Sue, which opened at the Music Box Theatre on the 8th of January 1987, later transferred to the Royal Theatre and ran for 164 performances. Mary also starred in film. Her first film was in 1957 in Operation Mad Ball. Her first speaking part was in X-15, 1961. Following her success on The Dick Van Dyke Show, she appeared in a string of films in the late 1960s after signing an exclusive contract with Universal Pictures, including Thoroughly Modern Miller, 1967, and two films released in 1968, What's So Bad About Feeling Good with George Peppard, and Don't Just Stand There with Robert Wagner. She starred opposite Elvis Presley as a nun in Change of Habit, 1969. Mary returned to the big screen in the coming-of-age drama Ordinary People, 1980, for which she received an Oscar nomination. She appeared in only two more films during the next 15 years, Six Weeks, 1982, and Just Between Friends, 1986. She also appeared in the independent hit Flirting with Disaster, 1996. Mary also appeared in several TV movies, which she received many Emmy nominations. Mary wrote two memoirs. In the first, After All, published in 1995, she acknowledged being a recovering alcoholic, while in Growing Up Again, Life, Loves and Oh Yeah, Diabetes, 2009, she focuses on living with type 1 diabetes. In her personal life, at age 18 in 1955, she married her next door neighbour, 28-year-old Cranberry juice salesman Richard Meeker, and within six weeks she was pregnant with her only child, Richard Carlton Meeker Jr., born on the 3rd of July 1956. They divorced in 1962. Later that year, Mary married Grant Tinker, a CBS executive and later chairman of NBC, and in 1969 they formed the television production company MTM Enterprises. After a 1973 breakup and patch-up, they announced a permanent separation in 1979 and divorced two years later. In the early 1980s, Mary dated Steve Martin and Warren Beatty. Another relationship with British film and television director Sir Michael Lindsay Hogg ended when she wanted to be exclusive and he didn't. 
On the 14th of October 1980, at the age of 24, Mary's son Richard died of an accidental gunshot to the head while handling a small shotgun. The model was later taken off the market. Mary married 29-year-old cardiologist Robert Levine on the 23rd of November 1983 at the Pierre Hotel in New York City. They met in 1982 when he treated Mary's mother in New York City on a weekend house call after Mary and her mother returned from a visit to the Vatican where they had personal audience with Pope John Paul II. They remained married for 33 years until her death in 2017. Mary struggled with alcohol addiction much of her life but quit drinking in 1984 when she admitted herself into the Betty Ford Centre. One year after getting sober, she quit her three pack a day cigarette habit. She was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in 1969. In 2011, she had surgery to remove a meningioma, a benign brain tumour. In 2014, friends reported that she had heart and kidney problems and was nearly blind from complications related to diabetes. Mary died at the age of 80 on the 25th of January 2017 at Greenwich Hospital in Connecticut from cardiopulmonary arrest complicated by pneumonia after having been placed on a ventilator the week before. Mary received many nominations and awards for her work in TV, film and theatre. This includes Academy Awards, Golden Globes, Emmy and Tonys. In 1986 she was inducted into the Television Hall of Fame. In 1987, she received a Lifetime Achievement Award in Comedy from the American Comedy Awards. Mary's contributions to the television industry were recognised in 1992 with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The star is located at 7021 Hollywood Boulevard. On the 8th of May 2002, Mary was present when Cable Network TV Land and the city of Minneapolis dedicated a statue by artist Gwendolyn Gillen in downtown Minneapolis of Mary Richards, her character in the Mary Tyler Moore show. The bronze sculpture was in front of Dayton's department store, later Macy's, near the corner of 7th Street South and at Nicolette Mall. It depicts the iconic moment in the show's opening credits where Mary tosses her tam o' shanter in the air in a freeze frame at the end of the montage. While Dayton's is clearly seen in the opening sequence, the store in the background of the hat toss is Donaldson's, which was, like Dayton's, a locally based department store with a long history at 7th and Nicolette. In late 2015, the statue was relocated to the city's visitor centre during renovations. It was reinstalled at its original location in 2017. Let's see where a grave is located.
So there you have it, the grave of Mary Tyler Moore, A-list celebrity and chat show host. I hope you enjoy watching the video, if so give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching as usual, see you on the next one.